So we've seen uh, four, four storms in AI in the past. In the 80s, we had the expert systems boom, and, and then there was what was called the AI winter, as people realized it was a much harder problem than we thought it was going to be, and, and people ran away a bit from the field. I mean, there's a real boom going on now. There's the last couple of years, the amount of funding going into the field has been doubling every two years yeah. and for the last six years. Are we at risk of having another AI winter, or is, is this really going to be, this is going to be the, 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 the point that takes us to human-level intelligence, maybe, or even beyond? So I think you want to break that up into, into two phases, right? So one is, uh, when you talked about the winter, uh, it's, it's both uh, a funding issue and a perception issue, and maybe they somewhat go hand in hand. Uh, I think we're going to continue to see funding because this time around we're seeing immediate returns that you can very quickly say, here's a new domain, I want to try something, hey, I got results that actually work. Whereas before, it was more you were investing in long-term technology. Uh, a lot of the work in you know, the early expert system work you talked about, uh, the money went into tools rather than into solutions. And so tools is a long-term bet that other people are going to buy this and then make their solutions. Now we're going more directly for solutions and to the extent that that's working, the investments will continue to grow. Now, the other part is the perception. And uh, we do risk getting to the point where people say, OK, uh, yeah, these techniques are really good at pattern recognition. And here's one more application of pattern recognition that's really working. Uh, but it doesn't seem like we're getting any closer to uh, full reasoning. And so that could be a, a place where people get uh, a little bit disillusioned. But to go beyond the perception, there's a technical question there, which is, are we still missing some important technical pieces that have to go into the jigsaw? Yeah. Or is it going to be, you know, we've got most of the basics and we're going to have to improve them and we'll put models in the are, are we missing some fundamental things yet? Uh, I think we've got a, a lot of breakthroughs uh, yet to go. Uh, and, uh, you know, if we had everything there, uh, we, we'd be doing more right now. And, uh, you know, you look at the technology that's available so we can do uh, speech recognition that really jumped right up. Uh, Machine translation, we cut the error rate in half uh, compared to, uh, to human performance. Uh, but the part that remains uh, seems uh, uh, more elusive or, uh, or not as open to making incremental improvements as, as it was in the past. So you're reassuring the audience that they don't have to worry that uh, Terminator's not wrapped us around the corner over there's quite a few more years. I mean, what, what, what's, your, what's, what's your way to calm people's nerves when they feel that right. the machines are just about to take over? You know, uh, I'd say, uh, let's go back to the story of John Henry, right, where uh, there are tasks that uh, people do, uh, and I think we should focus on the tasks rather than the jobs, and say there are parts of, your, of what you do that's uh, repetitive and not very interesting, and we have a lot of data on it, and we're probably going to be able to uh, build computer systems to take over those tasks. And then what remains is the part that's novel and new, and we don't have any data for it, and uh, those are parts where we're still going to want to have humans to do, those, uh, to do those parts. So the humans will have uh, very good tools. They'll be able to be much more productive and get their work done. But this partnership of a human with a set of tools is going to be better than handing everything over to automation.